Welcome. We are live here with Juan. Hi. 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 <laughs> from hi. Seattle, Washington. I hope everyone's having a beautiful Sunday. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> I brought uh, Juan here to interview him for this group called Musicians Against Depression and Cliches in hopes to inspire and motivate us. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Juan, thank you for joining us today. You, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll become. Uh, let me disarm myself. <laughs> now, right. I, now I see you. <laughs> I see you. Hmm. I really appreciate you and your time. Sure. Um, first, I'd like to ask you, what started your love for singing? My love for singing actually is probably older than I am, and I'm old, or at least I think I'm old. My first memory is performing in front of like kids that I was in elementary school with in October of 1967. And uh, my dad was stationed in Alaska at Fort Richardson. And we lived across the street from the school. Leaving school one day, a couple of kids are asked, you know, one kid says, you know, he can sing. No, he can't. Yes, he can. All of a sudden, it's like, well, do you know this song? And I start singing it. And then we keep walking. Finally get outside. There's now like five, six, eight kids well do you know this song and I sing it like, do you know this song and I sing it and now it's like 10 or 12 kids surrounding me and these big white flakes are coming down I remember and 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 you know whatever song that they they spit out I, I sing a little bit of that song mm -hmm. and uh, my, I hear my my name from behind me and I turn around and here comes my mom who looked out the window and saw me surrounded by all these kids so in a panic, she's now run across the street onto the schoolyard, gets up to me, and she looks at me and she says, Michael, are you all right? Mm -hmm. And I just looked up at her and I said, yeah, Mom, I'm, I'm just singing. And that was the very, that's the very first thing I can remember. Mm -hmm. Now, since then, at that age, I still remember. I remember singing in church. I remember singing for people at a Kiwanis thing on, on the bass. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, singing with my brother who was, uh, he was in high school at the time and, and had his own like American bandstand type show because mm -hmm. he was into broadcasting. Um, when we moved, dad got stationed uh, down here in Seattle, actually Tacoma at Fort Lewis in 68 where he retired. Mm -hmm. um, still singing then. Uh, we moved out to Lakewood in the fall of 88 or fall of 88, fall of 68. And two years after that, I'm, I'm the last day of school in third grade. Mm -hmm. I'm standing in front of, for some reason, I'm standing <laughs> in front of the whole elementary school singing, Jeremiah was a bullfrog. <laughs> and there are people who still remind me of that because yeah. they were there, mm -hmm. right? So I, I say that music has been a part of me like the nose on my face. It's always been a part of me. That's beautiful. And why do you continue to sing? <laughs> <laughs> why do birds? La, 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 la. Um, I've always been the cat who will sing anywhere, anytime, for anyone. Um, because all I can remember is people telling me the same thing. You're really good. You're really good. You know what? You're really talented. You're going to be famous. You're going to be, you're going to, God, why aren't you on the radio? Yeah. And, you know, for, when you tell a six-year-old that, and then at nine years old, you're being compared to Michael Jackson because you both sing, mm -hmm. right? Even though he's th he was three and a half years older than I was. And all through your life, that, you know, high school, college, you're really good, you know? You're going to be famous. You move to Seattle and you're playing bass guitar in a rock band. Damn, you're, nobody, you, nobody sounds like you. You're really good. You're really, really good. All, friends get signed and leave, like, you know, the guys from Alice in Chains and Soundgarden, people you used to hang out with and drink with, mm -hmm. they're out being famous and you're still here grinding and grinding and grinding. Mm -hmm. And about 2008, you realize there's no such thing as an old pop star. Mm -hmm. There's no one out there on the radio or on television doing music mm -hmm. who just got their break at your age. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens when the dream you've always had goes away? Mm -hmm. You realize that the reality is it's probably not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's, it was hard. Mm -hmm. You know, the one thing that I've been doing for all of my life, the one thing that I know that I'm good at because everyone has told me I am, is not going to facilitate or make itself into the dream that I've always had. Um, so I was in a hole for a little while. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, a drummer friend of mine reminded me that, you know, we don't do this because you're going to be famous. Mm -hmm. You do it because we do it because it, 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 we love it. Right. And at that point, um, I, tried to, I tried to reinvent myself and started collecting gear and learning how to record and making music for myself. Mm -hmm. Realizing that, you know, I was probably never going to be on MTV. I was probably never going to, gonna you know, be a worldwide smash or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Until mm -hmm. I got out of bed one night because I answered a phone call for a guy who was looking for a singer who sounded like Nate Dogg. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know who Nate Dogg is, he's that guy that sings on that, that Regulator song, that song that sounds like Michael McDonald, but it has the guy, it was a clear white man. And then the singer comes in, just hit the east side of the LBC on a mission trying to find Mr. Warren G. Mm -hmm. That's Nate Dogg. And these guys were looking for a singer who sounded like Nate. And a friend of mine, an ex-friend of mine, said, I know a guy, and all of a sudden I'm meeting this Ben Haggerty guy and Ryan Lewis. Mm -hmm. And 45 minutes of work in the booth, and it came out to be, I'm gonna pop some tags, only got $20 in my pocket. Which became a worldwide smash. And in two and a half years, everything I ever dreamed of, everything that I imagined happened wow. so to answer your question you know what keeps me going i never know when when or if that can happen again plus i love it yeah. and you know not being um not being wanting to be humble about the whole thrift shop experience mm -hmm. i would tell kids this all over the world because it was my experience at the time if you do something that makes you happy and if it makes someone else happy right. especially if it makes someone else happy never ever ever stop doing it because you never know where it can take you that's true well that goes that's perfect because that answers what i was going to ask you uh, next and i believe what you're trying to relay is um you were at a point in your life where you thought maybe what you foresaw could never happen and it still, it still occurred, not maybe in the way that you even thought, but because you kept persevering, it, it happened. Yeah, I used, to, I used to call myself the poster child of perseverance because I, I never gave up. And a lot, of, a lot of my friends that I've known since elementary, junior high, high school, college, since I've moved to Seattle in 86, a lot of those people, they, we, we admire you because you never gave up. You never gave up. It was really funny. It was uh, when the when the movie uh, Galaxy Quest came out. Mm -hmm. uh, all of a sudden, I had my tagline: "Never give up, never surrender." <laughs> right? And uh, even when I played to tables and chairs, and all my friends would say, "Yeah, I can't wait for your gig. I can't wait to see you," and none of them show up. Hmm. And that happened for a long time, mm -hmm. you know. But I I I was reminded of of what I was told. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't do it because you want to be famous. You do it because you love it. And now it's like I see that passion translated, you know, vicariously through thrift shop. I see people who are inspired to do things because they saw me do things. Mm -hmm. um, case in point, we were in Poland. Mm -hmm. Or not Poland, but Denmark. Mm -hmm. And it's before a show, and I'm, I always went outside and talked to kids before a show. Mm -hmm. And a girl was talking to me, and she says, I'm so depressed because we don't have thrift shops in Denmark. And I said, well, why don't you start one? That's a really good idea. I'd never thought of that. I said, yeah, just go collect clothes from your family and friends and, and put it out on the Internet that you're selling clothes. Yeah. You know? I want to ask for the listeners that are, are watching, the viewers that are watching, are you able to hear all right? Is the audio all right this go-round? Can you hear me? <laughs> you could give me a wave Can or something, Ron. Can you hear Ron? me running? Can you hear me running? I don't see any complaints. So Can you hear me here. calling you? <laughs> All right. Um, if you're ever feeling down, what do you do to bring yourself back up? Try really hard not to kill myself. I say that as a joke and in all seriousness. Uh -huh. um, I've been wrestling with depression for 25, 20, 25 years easy. Mm -hmm. um, I used to bury it in alcohol and decide... And diagnosed myself as an alcoholic mm -hmm. because alcohol took me to a place that I didn't, I, I was not me. I, I, I cheated on someone that I was in love with, that I loved with and lived with and was raising a family with. And th the night that that happened was the night of my last drink. 
because I figured if alcohol would take me there, I I was afraid of where else it would take me. Mm-hmm. You know, could I run somebody over? Could I, you know, injure myself some way? Could I, could I go off and injure my kids? Mm-hmm. You know, so this summer I'll be, you know, God willing, um, I'll be celebrating twenty years of sobriety. Congratulations. But that was only, you know, alcohol was only a symptom of a much deeper problem. And that depression has come back here, there, and everywhere. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm, I, I've gone to therapy on and off. I've been medicated on and off. I've, I've tried to figure it out, mm-hmm. right? But there's no getting away from that four inches in between our ears. Mm-hmm. We are our best friend and our worst enemy. Mm-hmm. And it's that comparison thing. Women do it all the time. It's like they see what lipstick is that person wearing? What rouge and eyeshadow is that person wearing? How is their hair? Oh, do they have bangs or not? What shoes are they wearing, right? Guys do it, but it's like, you know, you know, is he straight or gay? Is he buff or not? Hmm. Um, you know, is his beard better than mine? Mm-hmm. Speaking for a guy who doesn't have beard because he can't grow one, so therefore he hates them all. <laughs> um, but it's that comparison thing, and some people handle it better than others some people are just like whatever i am who i am yeah well there are those people like me who have to go through a very long process to remind ourselves that it's a good thing not to be like everyone else right because i've always grown up wanting to be like everyone else Mm -hmm. i wanted to be included in things Mm -hmm. but i grew up in a predominantly white neighborhood so i really didn't look like everybody else Uh, i had really restrictive parents so i didn't get to go hang out and and you know, in high school, it was like I felt like an outcast, even though I knew everybody. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a group yeah. that I hung out with. I didn't have a, a clique. Wasn't an athlete. Wasn't one of the, the, the cigarette smokers who cut class. Mm-hmm. I wasn't a brain. Mm-hmm. You know, where did I fit in? And, you know, being a musician, being, being musical in high school, the only people who want to hang out with you are the musicians. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, when I got to college, uh, I reinvented myself. I, I called myself the Wands. Yeah. Why? Because I had learned that there were kids outside of my school district who had liked the fact that I knew songs on the radio. They liked the fact that I could dance. They liked the fact that I l- made people laugh. Yeah. And that persona I created when I got to college, when I got to Central Within three hours of being at Central, I had organized a, a campus-wide dance. Mm-hmm. And that week that was all for freshmen, I had three of them that week. Wow. Right? So by the time the upperclassmen came back, they were like, who is this Wands guy? Who is this guy? Mm-hmm. And people who went to school with me will tell you. Right? He was that guy. The guy he, riding his bike, no hands, Walkman on his ears, playing drums with the, there were none existed, singing at the top of his lungs. That was Wands. You know, always had a smile on his face, always had a good thing to say to you, always had, always was there to listen to you mm-hmm. um, and and try to lift you up. But, you know, as I got older, especially when I got into my late 30s and early 40s, that guy, I found out that was his crutch. Because it, it, it's a lot easier for me to suggest things to you, mm-hmm. especially if I've been through them and I know what that feeling feels like for me. Mm-hmm. So I can imagine what it would feel like for you. Mm-hmm. Um it was a lot easier for me to prop you up right. than it would be to be alone and prop myself up. Mm-hmm. And it was a lot easier for me to find people to prop up than it was to let people prop me up. Mm-hmm. And so now in my 50s, um, it's, it's really interesting uh, how that dynamic has changed. Um, and I've given away so much of myself that some days, some hours in a day, there's just not enough of me there. Yeah. And I don't know why that is. I mean, I just had a performance re- review at work, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, for the fourth year in a row, my boss says, you know, you seem to lack confidence. <laughs> <laughs> Story of my life, dude. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Story of my life. I've done things that other people can do, and, and they ask me, how did you do that? And I said, well, I just didn't believe that I couldn't do it. But that works when it comes to things like building a bookcase or recording a song but when it comes to being alone Hmm. when it comes to watching uh old people hand in hand old people who have been married for 50 60 years and not having that basis of that experience Mm -hmm. even my parents were married more than 60 years 
but I'm not going to I'm not going to have that experience. Mm-hmm. So just like am I ever going to be famous? Am I ever going to be content with someone else? Mm-hmm. Or am I going to be alone? Mm-hmm. And if I'm going to be alone, what's that look like? How is that? Yeah. Cuz some people look at being alone as like a death sentence. Mm-hmm. And, you know, depression will eat you from the inside out. Yeah. You will become your own worst enemy. So I'm looking for ways to become more of a friend to me which allows me to be a friend to everyone else. I think that's great to, to be a friend. Sometimes when you're a really good person, you can deplete yourself. Yeah, uh, one of the you know little lessons in, in, in recovery, they call them God shots. And I used to get God shots all the time during the thrift shop run. Mm-hmm. Whenever we'd be on a plane, it didn't matter what country we were in, they'd do that little spiel about, these are the exits, it might be behind you. You know, and the the part where it's like, you know, a mask will drop from here and and pull on it, you know, and even though the bag doesn't inflate, oxygen will be flowing. Make sure to put your own mask on before assisting others. That's right. Now, see, that is a key to life that doesn't get promoted as much. Yeah. Because in the program, they say you can't can't transmit something you don't have. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the experience of having a baby, you can't really talk to someone who's expecting if you have never been divorced, you can't really talk to someone who is about to get a divorce. Yeah. So, you know, if you've never lost a family member, you can't really tell somebody who's about to lose one what it's like. Mm-hmm. You can't transmit what you don't have. Mm-hmm. So I take it upon myself to share as much of my experience as possible because that allows me to find people, you know, the similarities between people mm-hmm. are the experiences that we have in common. That's going to be the key to saving humanity. When we start looking at the similarities and not so much the differences, the world will change. Mm -hmm. But there are people who are so focused on the differences, they keep driving that wedge. But slowly but surely, I think the tide is changing. And I think the people who are on our side, who who focus on these similarities, oh, look, you've got two eyes too. Oh, look, your ears are on the side of your head. (laughs) Oh, that's kind of cool. The nose, the nose, it's in the middle of yeah, your face. Yeah. When they start looking at those types of similarities instead of everything else, yeah. those people are going to start multiplying in number and totally outweigh all the other people who are saying, I don't like you because you're Muslim. I don't like you because you're Asian. I don't like you because you're lesbian or LGBTQ. Mm-hmm. I don't like you because you're not like me. Right. And it's like, whoa, usually, for me, that's the red light. Well, if if you're looking for more people like you, and you're not like a lot of people, doesn't that make you kind of the problem? Mm-hmm. Where is that line between being unique yet being a part of humanity? Right. For everyone, it's different. And this is where all of this gets really, really uh, complicated mm-hmm. because it's different for everyone. You know, take two minutes and watch everyone around you don't say a word and look at the things that they do. Everybody does exactly the same thing, but they do it just slightly differently. And therein lies the challenge. Can you see the things that you do in someone else? Maybe they, maybe they order coffee just slightly different than yours. Have you ever ordered somebody's, somebody's order for coffee and found out that you liked it? How many other things are like that? Works in dresses, shoes, colors of makeup. Eyeshadow, contact lenses or glasses, beard, no beard, no (laughs) hair, right? We do this comparison thing all the time. But you find out, you find that if you're like me, you find this dissatisfaction with yourself because somebody else looks, quote unquote, better than you do. Mm -hmm. Uh, I I, I have this conversation all the time with myself. Mm -hmm. I'm no better or worse than anyone else, period. I'm no better or worse than anyone else. I'm just different because I was raised a certain way. Mm -hmm. To think a certain way. To do things a certain way. But that doesn't mean that I can't change. Who knows? You might have a different way of doing something that will work better for me. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make sense for me to say, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Because that new experience may be the very thing that causes me to believe more in myself. Like thrift shop. Mm -hmm. I spent most of my life believing that I could make it until I stopped believing that I could make it. Then when I quote unquote made it, I believed that I could make it. And for the last number of years, 
all the things that I've tried haven't matched that anywhere. Cl- and I don't want to re- replicate the whole thing. I just want a little slice. I'm not greedy. Mm-hmm. But I haven't got that level of what I would think is su- success. So then I start questioning, well, am I really talented? Am I, you know, nobody seems to want to work with me. I don't really put out very much music. I don't, I don't have a following that I know of around town. I don't play gigs. I don't, you know, it's not, when's the last time you saw me do a solo show at Bumbershoot? Right? Mm-hmm. Why is that? Because, mm-hmm. you know, there aren't thousands of people who will come see me. Mm-hmm. Sing what I sing and do what I do. Mm-hmm. It's not like I've made a secret. I have, you know, at T-E-E-W-A-N-Z. It's on Spotify, it's on uh, SoundCloud, Mm -hmm. it's on Instagram, it's on Twitter. Wands is on Facebook. So where are all these followers that they say that I have when I put out music? It's like, yeah, a couple, 30, 40, maybe 100, maybe. Mm -hmm. So what are you supposed to think? Don't you think that, like, compared to when you started singing and to now, your idea of making it has changed? Definitely, because being... Being a, you know, it used to be that I was Michael the Wands Wandsley musical artist. Mm-hmm. Now I'm Michael the Wands Wandsley Grammy award winning vocalist, best rap performance 2013 on Macklemore and Ryan Lewis's Thrift Shop, mm-hmm. which is great. Mm-hmm. Not very many people have a Grammy. Mm-hmm. I have a Grammy and a Diamond Award, which is 10 million units sold. But I look at those statues now and I don't know what they mean because I'm here, right? right? Macklemore's out. He's made a couple more records. Ryan is doing what the, what Ryan does and so on and so forth. And, and like everyone else, I'm trying to do what I do. Mm-hmm. But to look for that return, I'm, I, I'm struggling trying to figure out how much vindication do I need from other people as opposed to how much do I want from other people. Everybody likes to have that vindication. Oh, you look nice today. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a nice... Your smile is so sweet. You're such a nice person. God, I can't believe that you've, you know, you've lost so much weight. You look really radiant today, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody likes to have that positive feedback. Right. But when, you're, when, when your love is a certain thing, wow, that's a really cool sketch that you did. Wow, you did that? Wow, you made that? That's, that tastes really good. Yeah. But if you don't get that, are you, are you wanting it too much? These are the questions that I have. I don't know how much enough is. Mm-hmm. I don't know exactly what content looks like. Because mm-hmm. I'd rather be content than happy. Mm-hmm. Right? If I'm content, it doesn't matter if I'm happy or not. Right? Right. But if you're happy and you're not happy, oh, that's not good. No. But being content, you know. So I think like everyone else, I'm always searching for it. But like everyone else, I really don't want to look like I'm looking for it, mm-hmm. which is why I wanted to do this. Mm-hmm. You know, we are more alike than we are different. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to make sure that people understood that no matter what you see in someone, what they feel and what they're going through may be exactly what you feel and what you go through. And ha- I encourage you to have the conversation that, or have the courage to have a conversation with somebody and ask them, what do you do? Have you ever felt like the same way you would ask them, have you seen A Star is Born? <laughs> Did you go see Bohemian Rhapsody? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Have the conversation. Right. You might be surprised what you hear. Okay. What um, gets you up every morning, you know, to continue? The sun. The sun. <laughs> <laughs> Getting up, uh, you know, I, I, I've... I've gotten to the age where I, I, I spend most of my day trying to lower my expectation level. Expectation, what I think things are supposed to be, is the enemy. Because when it doesn't turn out the way that I think it should be, then I get disappointed. And that disappointment manifests itself in various various ways. Ha! Huh, case in point. Last night, got done with a concert hella late. I mean, I was driving home at 3.30 in the morning, and I wanted to stop. I was starving, right? So I knew that between... The Tacoma Dome and Shoreline, there was a a drive-through that I could hit, and I knew it was in Federal Way, so I wait, and and it's like to get out of traffic, and and then I had to get gas, and okay, I'm starving, I'm starving, I get off the road, and get in the drive-through line, and I order my food, and I'm behind the person who didn't know what they want, so they took forever. (laughs) Then it took forever, you know, it must be something special because they wanted, you know, because I'm sitting behind them, starving, 
starving, starving, starving. And when I get them, uh, it's not only not only did I not get a straw for my drink, my fries were cold. Hmm. Right? Yeah. But it's a it's a it's a, the drive through the restaurants on the corner. You can't just back up, and it's three or four, almost four in the morning. You can't go in. Yeah. So what am I do? Get in line behind the six cars in the drive through? Mm-hmm. I'm like, f this. So, you know, it's like, I should have done this. I should have waited and gone to the jack-in-the-box that was at my hood. And like I thought about, you know, or gone, gone to another place. But the lesson there is that we do the best that we can with the information we have at the moment. Mm-hmm. And if we're paying attention, the answer is always maybe something different next time. Because all of us are going through things again. We're seeing things again. Life is really cyclical. Yeah. And the question is, can you spot the similarities in the decisions that you made before so that you can make a different decision? Right. If I would have chosen Jack in the Box over McDonald's last night, would I have had that same experience? Mm-hmm. Probably not. Right? Right. So, um, wow, I just talked myself off the cliff. What, what was the well, question? You were, you were talking about uh, expectations. You you wake up and you try. Oh, to what have, gets me up every yeah, day? Yeah. What gets me up every day? You know, I, I, the expectation that I can tr- that I control nothing. Yet, I have the power of choice, and I always have that power. That's true. If it's raining, I can choose to put on a jacket, choose to put on a hat, choose to have an umbrella, but I can't make it stop raining. Right. And that's the perfect example of everyone. You have the power of choice. Always. Mm -hmm. I wake up every day, ooh, all five senses work. Great. Everything else is an opportunity. All bets are off. Mm -hmm. You know? We were going to do this interview, what, two weeks ago? Yeah. Right? And it took a while, but here we are. Yeah. Right? So, stuff happens all the time. And it changes the circumstances in which we make our decisions. Mm -hmm. So, you can either go with that flow, or you can wrestle with fate the way it is and my favorite line from the movie blade is you know some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill (laughs) don't be that guy yeah and that's what i tell myself in the in the mornings and in the evenings and anytime during the day that i see a mirror don't be that guy don't be that person who's going against the current of trying to push the current a certain way Mm -hmm. you don't know what's going to happen I challenge, the, if you're watching this, you know, go to my YouTube page, just look up Wands on YouTube and, and, and listen to the song Get Lucky and listen to the story. In the middle of the story, in the middle of the song is, is, is some of them, you know, for me, some of the most prophetic words that I've ever written. Remember, nothing's over till it's over and nothing's over till you say. Just because this didn't work out don't mean that will surely fail. I can't say what's going to happen. I didn't come here to read your cards. I'm not here to hand you a tissue just because your damn life got hard. But I will say that anything is possible if you have the strength to try. If you keep reaching, there's a good chance someday you'll surely touch the sky. Chances will keep coming. Sure as the sunrise every day, you can choose to sit and watch them pass, or you can grab what's yours to take. Mm -hmm. So have faith. I agree. I totally agree. Have you ever personally known someone who was depressed? How did you handle, you know, interacting with them? Uh, depends. I mean, it depends on how well I know them and, and the level of quote-unquote depression. I mean, there are a lot of people who get discouraged by a lot of things, you know? And especially living up here. We, you know, you survived another winter. If you're, <laughs> if you're, if you're watching this, right? Yeah. You made it. Right? <laughs> Through all those gray days. And then the snow again at the end. And look at today. Today it's like 65 degrees and sunny and clear. And you made it. <laughs> right? <the> likes. <laughs> right. And so it's like I, I would tell people, it's like, you know, I learned this a long time ago. Even on the cloudiest of days, on the rainiest of days, there are variations in the sky that make it different. That variation in gray for me was curious because it meant things were always moving. And if you think of how weather works and wind patterns and how th- thick or thin the clouds are, that determines how much light actually gets through. Everyone says, I wish the sun were out. Well, newsflash, it's daytime. 
That's how you know the sun is out, okay? <laughs> Clouds, different story. But in those varied shades of gray, I found, comparatively speaking, each moment in my life is exactly the same way. In the river of time, things change. Sometimes, you know, you don't know what's going to happen in the next five minutes. None of us do. Mm -hmm. And therein lies the excitement. Do you feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? So, you know, having anticipation without expectation is the challenge. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you like roller coasters, it's like climbing the top of that first rise mm -hmm. right before you start going down. Right. Right? That anticipation of the excitement. When I have that from moment to moment, from hour to hour, from day to day, week to week, generally things are okay. But for people who can't see past where they're at at that moment, mm -hmm. I try to remind them, you've been here before. Right. You've been here before. And you're still here. Right. So, you know, I'm, I have a particularly cruel thing for people who want to check out. I know where my path leads. I know where the door to suicide is. I know I could take it at any fucking time I want. Right? Mm -hmm. I know where it is. I don't run from it. Mm -hmm. But, once again, I also realize that I have the power of choice. And if I commit suicide, I know exactly what's going to happen. I'm not going to be here anymore. And great, the pain will be gone, but then so will the beauty of the sun warm on your skin today. That wonderful taste of your favorite ice cream. That look from a baby when it smiles at you. The clumsiness of a newborn horse, right? That great part of your favorite song. All those things go away. There are more reasons to stay here because you don't know when you're going to run into the cool things. Yeah. Right? And I remind people of that. If they choose to check out anyway, that's on them. That has nothing to do with me. I can't, I, I, I can't say what's going to happen. I didn't come here to pull your guard. I can't hand you a tissue. I wasn't here to hand you a tissue just because your life got hard. I will mm -hmm. because my experience is I've had it hard too. Mm -hmm. But if I can make it, you can make it. I'm not that special. I mean, I'm special, but not that special, right? Mm -hmm. And everyone, if you say that to yourself and actually internalize it and then keep seeing things simple, I can guarantee you life will be different. It may not be better. Mm -hmm. It may not be worse, but it will be different. If you don't, you know, if you don't wear a size 12, so flipping what? People who wear a size 12 are pissed off they can't wear a size 3. And people who are a size 3 probably don't eat healthy and wish they were taller and wish they could wear a plus size. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Everybody's different. Mm -hmm. Ask them. Ask them. And when asked, answer honestly. Mm -hmm. Right? My dad used to say, Closed mouth don't get fed. And if you're looking for help, none of us are mind readers. So when somebody says, are you okay? Don't say, yeah, I'm fine. Fine stands for fucked up, insecure, neurotic, and egotistical. Don't be fine. I never want to be fine. I can be okay. But I never want to be fine. No one's going to you're not going to find the answer when you say, no, I'm okay. I'm fine. No, nothing's wrong. Liar. <laughs> People know. It's a different experience to say, well, yeah, I'm, I'm just curious about something. Or, you know, you can dress it up as being somebody else's story and not talk about you if you're shy about that. And, and lastly, I'll say, you know, in, in getting sober, I had a sponsor who had a sponsor. And that, my grand sponsor used to say, you're only as sick as your secrets. And in my experience in recovery, the people who didn't want people to find out things about them, those things took, some of them took over these people to the point where the only way that they could function was to medicate. 
and they had a disease like I have a disease. All it wants to do is get you alone. And once it gets you alone, all it wants to do is kill you. Lane Staley. Andy Wood. Kurt Cobain. These are three guys that I knew. Two of them I knew personally. And, you know, they checked out. They checked out because they were trying to escape the reality that they were in. They didn't say, you know what, I got a problem. They didn't say that. When somebody said, are you okay? They said, yeah, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a minute. Fine could, being fine could kill you. Not today, mm -hmm. not tomorrow, later, maybe soon, maybe not for a while. You never know. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. I'd rather know. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I'd rather know. I would rather know. Yeah. What's going to happen right now, I have no idea. But I know one thing. I'm going to be here to see what it is. Right. What's going to happen next? I have no idea. But I, you know, I have no idea what's going to, I don't know what I'm going to eat for dinner today. <laughs> but I can't wait to find out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with asking for help. Yeah, there is. No. Yeah, if they tell you all the time, well, I don't want to be judged. I don't want people to think this of me. Oh, fuck that. They already are. Mm -hmm. Newsflash, you're already being judged mm -hmm. by whatever it is, you know, however you look, whatever you wear, whatever you say, what you do. Get over it. Mm -hmm. This is the other thing I tell kids. I got junior high school. I got junior high. I got teenage grandchildren. <laughs> don't think about how people will judge you because they will. Right. And the fact that you know that it's going to happen, well, you know, you know, if the sun is shining, it's daytime. You know that. It's indisputable. Gravity, you know that. Why? Because your feet are on the ground. When you throw something in the air, it falls to the ground. Gravity, you know that, right? Yeah. Know you're going to be judged. But you get the choice of whether you care or not right. what that judgment is. Because someone who judges you, especially if they don't know you, think about that. That's like telling somebody about a book you've never read. Right. Think about it. How stupid is that? Yeah. But we do this to ourselves, yeah. right? Even me, you know, mm -hmm. I am I am the, in that struggle. Dude, you were on like one of the most popular songs ever. I love that song. Great. What am I supposed to do now? Because <laughs> I don't sound like Bieber. I don't sound like uh, Travis Scott. I don't sound like Shelton Harris. I don't sound like... Travis Thompson, I don't sound like Macklemore, I don't sound like Barry White, I don't sound like anyone but me. So where are the people who like me? Well, I gotta find them. How do I find them? I have no idea. So the journey of discovery every day is, well, maybe this, maybe that, maybe this. And I've been doing that for the last five years. Because I'm still that six-year-old kid who everybody says, I really like you, you're really good. I, th You know, you're gonna be famous. Mm -hmm. I love that song that you sing great I feel good that I was able to do that mm -hmm. my mom told me Michael you have a gift God wants you to share that gift so I try to that's why I'm doing this to keep it to keep myself sane I have to give away my experience mm -hmm. and if you want to have an experience that's like mine meaning that you know you're not too high you're not too low you're somewhere in the middle all the time no matter what happens mm -hmm then you've got to share your experience. That's right. you got to share your experience because you'll find that there are more people think just like you instead of thinking, oh, they've got, oh, wow, look at them. They're driving a, a, a Jaguar and look at those, look at that purse. Right. Oh my God, they must have their shit together. <laughs> Ooh, and hawk up to their eyeballs, <laughs> right? Yeah. You never know, you never know. Yeah, it's really important to stay connected and never ever isolate yourself. Which is my specialty, you know? But, you know, I look forward to sunny days, sunny days at 68 degrees, because then I ride my motorcycle where it's just me and my helmet. Nice. Right? But that's proven to me to be the best therapy, because it separates the, that stupid shit from the real shit. Things that matter. And I get courage to try something else. You know, keep breathing. Something's going to change. It always has. Yeah. And it always will. Mm -hmm. You just got to hang in there and wait. Uh, 
you shared something with me earlier today uh, that you would like to be the theme of our discussion and I believe the quote was uh, it matters more what you believe in yourself than what others believe in you yeah that's kind of what we were talking I I, I have a book called hashtag the book of wands mm -hmm. and it's a Kindle book you can get it on Kindle um, hashtag the book of wands and in there uh, I in talking to these kids it's a bunch of tweets and little parables that I came up with while I was touring. Because like I said, I went I went out before every show that I could and talked to the kids who were waiting in line, because to me that was fascinating. Mm -hmm. And found out that this old guy has a lot in common with these young kids. And it's fear. It's fear. We have the same fears. They want to be accepted, which is why they wear what they wear and talk like they talk and do what they do, dance how they dance. They want to be accepted. Well, when you get to be a certain age and you know, if you lose a spouse or your kid leaves and you're an empty nester, some kind of life event, you lose a parent, right? Mm -hmm. There's an identity shift there for you, right? And all of a sudden, the same fear that you have is exactly like theirs. And I, I, I will never forget, we were playing in Stockholm and the kids had never heard any of my music, so I was singing a cappella. And one of the, I just sang the song that, you know, that I had written and after I did that, I never knew that you had your own music. You're really pretty good. And I said, you probably are too. What do you do? She says, well, I like to draw. And I said, well, do you have any drawings I'd like to see him? She says, no. And I said, why not? And so I don't let anybody see them. They're, they're crappy. Light bulb comes on. We are much more than we tell ourselves. Because until I sang, and I mean, drop a pin silent, right? Mm -hmm. That, I didn't make that up, it just happened. I didn't entertain, I didn't ask that kid to talk to me. It just happened. Mm -hmm. And the realization of, wow, you know, self-talk is a real thing. Self-talk, self-care, all that thing, self, hmm. Being, being, being constructively selfish mm -hmm. is a really good thing. Mm -hmm. When you're destructively selfish, that's bad. How do you know when you're destructively selfish? When you think of yourself so much, it comes at the expense of someone else. Anyone else. Not just someone you know. Mm -hmm. Anyone. Mm -hmm. Constructively selfish means you think enough of yourself that you're not thinking of yourself when you do something for someone else. Mm -hmm. That's constructive, you know, that's constructive selfishness. But that's just my experience. Your results may vary. I'm just saying. I was planning on asking you what you'd like to share with the group. Uh, Almost now, everything. But but now that now that we're talking and based off of everything that we discussed, I would like to know, since you shared that quote with me about believing in yourself, what would you like for the group, ideally, um, to believe that they may have not? Maybe they're not thinking. So I would like the group to believe that, number one, you're not unique. Number two, the power of choice is always going to be yours, no matter what it is. Whether you wear slip-ons or tie, dark shoes or light, underwear or commando, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't freaking matter, right? Up, down, I have another song that's about choice, you know? Flip the script and choose, on or off, worse or better, even chance for both, decide now or never, up, down, left, right, stay, go, then, now. You just never know. You just never know. And most importantly, the third, the, the third, fourth thing, whatever, the most important thing is share your experience in this group and outside of it. Because the constructive, the construction of whatever it is you think you're missing will come from the constructive feedback of someone else. Remember, our eyes only see out. Our mind sees in. But the mind doesn't really work very well without the mouth as a communication device. Right? Nobody's a mind reader. So, you know, have the courage to ask a question. Just make sure that you're prepared for the answer. 
It may not be what you want. It may not be what you expect. It may not be the truth, but you still have the choice to question it and find out more. You always have the power of choice. Okay. Thank you, ones. I'm just going to go on the other side so I can say goodbye to everyone. <laughs> come here, come here. Come here. Can you sit on my lap? Santa Claus. Is I hope you can see. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Wands, for joining us. And thank you, everyone. And stay tuned until the next uh, interview. Yeah. I'm not sure. I don't I don't like to schedule these. I kind of, you know, we all have different schedules. But Make sure to tag somebody. Month, tag, tag somebody. Someone. Tag someone. You know. <laughs> and I hope that we inspired you and just know that you're never, ever alone. Let me leave right you with here. one last thing my mom used to tell me. Do something good for yourself, then go do it for somebody else. That's right. There you go. Have a happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone. Uh, can we have a potato? <laughs> Who's got the potato for once? All right. <laughs>